Now let's look at some applications of quadratic equations. To start with, let's suppose we have a rectangular garden. And we know that it is seven feet longer than it is wide. So if I call one side x, the other side has to be seven feet longer than that. And we know that its area is 540 square feet. So we want to determine how big our garden is. What are the dimensions? So we know our area is 540, which is my length times my width. Multiplying out, I have 540 equal to x squared plus 7x. I can subtract 540 from both sides and get 0 equal to x squared plus 7x minus 540. And this equation actually does factor. It factors into x plus 27, x minus 20. So that tells me either x plus 27 is equal to 0 or x minus 20 is equal to 0. If I solve this first one, I get x equal to negative 27. If I solve the second one, x equal to 20. Since we're talking about the length of sides, negative numbers just don't make sense here. So x is 20. So the dimensions of this is going to be 20 by x plus 7, so 27. And those are the dimensions of our garden. Another one, let's suppose a plane flew between Boston and San Francisco, a distance of 3,000 miles. Let's also suppose that the return trip going the other way was 100 miles per hour faster than the outbound trip. And finally, let's suppose the total round trip air, uh, flight took 11 hours. So now the question is, what was the actual speed of the first flight? Since we're traveling in this trip, we want to use our distance equals to rate times time. But we're actually going to modify this slightly and divide both sides by r to get d over r is equal to t. And this is going to be a simpler form to use this in. So we know that our total time was 11 hours. The first trip, the distance is 3,000, and our rate we'll call x. And the 11 hours is the first trip plus the second trip, which the distance between Boston and San Francisco didn't change, but our speed did. We're going 100 miles per hour faster. And now we want to solve this. We need to multiply by the common denominator, x times x plus 100. Here, I would have 11x times x plus 100 is equal to 3,000 times x plus 100, since the x's will cancel, plus 3,000x, since the x plus 100 will cancel. This gives me 11x squared plus 1100x is equal to 3000x plus 300000, so 300,000, plus 3000x. One more simplification gives me 11x squared plus 1100x is equal to 6,000x plus 300,000. Let's now look at solving this. Our first step is that we want to get all of our terms on one side, so we can either factor or use the quadratic formula. So subtract 6,000x from both sides. That gives me 11x squared minus 4,900x is equal to 300,000. I can then subtract 300,000 from both sides. And I get 11x squared minus 4,900x minus 300,000 equal to zero. And this is going to be kind of a pain to factor, but it's also going to be kind of a pain to use the quadratic formula. So we may want to use some technology to help us factor this. We get 11x plus 600 
times x minus 500. So either 11x plus 600 is equal to 0, in which case once I solve this I get negative 600 over 11, or x minus 500 is equal to 0, and solving that gives me x equal to 500. Since we're talking about speeds, this first one doesn't make sense because we can't have a negative speed. So the original flight was 500 miles per hour. Let's look at one more. Let's suppose we have a bullet that's shot straight upward and we know that its path is determined by negative 16 t squared plus 800 t, where h is its height in feet and t is its time in seconds since it's been fired. So what I want to know first is when does this bullet reach the ground? So when is the height equal to zero? Well that would give me negative 16 t squared plus 800 t. I can factor by factoring out the negative 16 t. So when I do that, I'm left with just a t on the first one. And then when I remove negative 16 from 800, I'm left with negative 50. So either negative 16 t is 0 or t minus 50 is equal to 0. The first one is time 0 when it's shot. The second one would be 50 seconds later is when it reaches the ground.